Hello guys and welcome to another video tutorial series on system design and today we will be seeing how we can implement an LRU cache replacement policy using Java code. So before start implementing the LRU cache replacement policy let's first understand the concept. So as you know that in our computer science we have two memories in our computer system. One is the main memory and one is the cache and the size of the cache is much much smaller than the main memory. So we need a replacement policy by which we can replace the content of the cache in the computer system. And in our computer science to keep the cache memory updated we have few of the cache eviction policies and the most important cache replacement algorithms that are mostly asked during any technical interview are as follows. Number one FIFO that means first in first out which means that whatever that goes inside the cache first will also come out of the cache on the first go which is same as the implementation of a queue over here and the next one of the cache replacement policy is LIFO that is last in first out which is same as the concept of stack over here and the third is like the LRU policy which means the least recently used policy. So here L stand for least, R stand for recently and U stand for used. And number four is the optimal replacement algorithm. Among all the four page replacement algorithms, LRU that is least recently used algorithm is the most important and mostly asked question during the technical interview. So let's start with today's topic, how to implement a LRU caching system. So before start implementing the LRU cache replacement policy, let's first understand how this replacement policy actually works. So let's take an example that we have an array of page over here that need to be replaced in a cache of size 3 means which can accommodate a maximum of three pages at a particular time. So let's take an example that this is our cache memory of size three. And these are the requested pages that is coming and we have to replace the cache using our LRU policy. So here on the first case, we have got the page number one. And we see that our cache over here is right now empty. So we need to insert that page on the cache. So let's insert that over here. So here we got a page fault. So if you are not exactly clear with the replacement policies and terminologies, I would highly recommend that you should go with the basic concept of page replacement algorithm. So I will give the basic concept and terminologies of the page replacement algorithms in the description below. So let's get back to the implementation part of the LRU caching system. So here on the second case, we got the page number two. So here we have to first check whether this page exists in this cache or not. So here in this case, we do not have the page number two in the cache and the cache is not completely filled over here. So here also we got a page fault. Now on the third iteration, we see that we got a page number three. So here we will see that whether the, this cache already contains that page or not. If not, we'll see that whether there is an empty space in the cache or not. So in this case, we also have an empty space. So we will update the cache in memory and we will move forward. Now on the next iteration, we got the page number four. Now we have to see whether the page four exists in the memory location or not. So over here, we see that the page four doesn't exist over here. Now the next step is like we have to see whether the cache over here is empty or not. So here we can see that the cache is fully occupied with other pages. So we just need to replace a particular page over here to optimize the performance of the cache. Means we need to replace that page number which is least recently used. So here we can see that the page number one was the page that was least recently used because the last recently used over here was three and before that it was two and the least recently used page was one. So we need to replace this page memory from our caching system. So what we will do, 
we will replace this one from here and we will replace it with four now in our memory system we have four two and three now on the fifth iteration we have the next element as one so here you can see our cache system is full over here so here also we need to replace the least recently used page from the memory system so as you can see here the least recently used memory system is 2 so we just need to replace the 2 from here so we will replace this 2 with the newly added page that is 1 now on the next iteration we got our next page that is 2 so here also we will first check that whether the page 2 is present in the memory location or not so here also it is not then we have to replace a page from the memory location using our LRU approach and here we can see here the page that is least recently used from here is 3 and thus we have to replace the page 3 from the memory so we will replace the page 3 and we will put the newly requested page location that is 2 and on our last iteration we have the memory location as like this so here also we will replace the least recently used memory location and that is 4 so here we will replace the number 4 and we will replace it with the newly added page that is 5. So during the technical interview this is one of the important question that is mostly asked during a system design interview round. So the interviewer will ask that you need to design an algorithm similar to LRU approach that will count the total number of page fault over here and it should print out the content of the cache at the last iteration. So your output should look somewhat like this. And you need to count the total number of page fault or page miss over here. So in this case, the number of page fault is 7. So we need to design an algorithm in Java so that we can get this desired output. So let's see how we can design the LRU page replacement technique using Java. So here to implement an LRU system, we will be using a linked hash set. So here let's take example, the size of the cache is 3. And here we are creating a linked hash set of size 3. So the question is why we are using a linked hash set to implement this functionality. So the primary reason why we are using a linked hash set is the insertion and the deletion operation in a hash set is the most optimized one. And the second is like we need to keep maintaining the order of insertion and deletion of a page from the memory location. And that's why we are using a linked hash set over here. So let's take an example and let's understand that how we will be implementing this function in Java to make this algorithm works. So here before writing the actual code for the implementation of LRU policy, let's first understand using our visual display board what we actually need to do over here. So at the very beginning of the program, we have an array of pages. And here for the implementation of LRU, we are using a linked hash set of size 3. So let's consider that we are dividing the linked hash set into two logical parts. The left side denote the least used and the right side denote the recently used. Which means for the eviction policy, we will be deleting the pages from the cache from the left side and we will be inserting the new requested pages from the right side. So let's iterate over the list of pages so that we can get an idea that how this thing will work and so that based on that idea we will write our actual code. So here let's take example that the, for the first time we got a request for page number 3. Now first we have to check two things. Number one is the linked hash set is full or not. So in this case the linked hash set is not full so it will return false and as well as we have to check whether the page 3 is present in the hash set or not. So that is also not present. So we will just insert the page 3 and we will move the pointer forward. Now on second iteration we will again see that the incoming page request is 2 and we will check whether the page exists in the hash set or not and we will also check whether the hash set is completely fooled or not. So here also the page does not exist in the hash set and the hash set is not full. So we will blindly insert the element in the hash set. Similarly for the next iteration also we will check 
and we will insert the element in the hash set. Now, if you just look into the hash set carefully, the 3 was the least recently used which is residing on the left side of the hash set and 1 was the last recently used that's why it is on the right side of the hash set. So if there is any more request of a page that is not present over here, we will eliminate the page 3 that was least recently used. So let's proceed with the iteration. So on the next iteration, we got a request for the page number 2. Now in this case, we see that the page number 2 is already present in the hash set as well as the page is full over here. So we just need to change the priority of the page number 2 within the hash set. So we need to swap between the number 2 and 1. So which can be done by first we need to remove the element and then we have to reinsert the 2 again so that it increase the priority and it place the page 2 on the right hand side. So right now if you see 2 is the most recently used and 1 goes inside. Now let's move to the next iteration that is 4. So 4 is not present over here and the hash set over here is full. So here we need to remove one of the page from our hash set. And here if you notice the page that was least recently used was 3. So we will replace the page 3 from here and we will insert the element 4 over here. So here you can see that the page 3 got evicted from our hash set and we inserted the element 4 over here. Now on the next case, we have the page 1. So here also we will see that whether the element is present or not. So if it is present, we just need to swap the position within the hash set. Means we have to first delete the element 1 from the hash set. Then we have to reinsert the element back into the hash set so that it enhance the priority over here. So we have to keep on iterating the entire page list over here till we come to the end of the page array. And at the end of the iteration, we can see that the pages that reside on the link has set within our cache using the least recently used policy are 2, 1 and 3. And the total number of page faults over here is 8. So let's start with the implementation of LRU caching policy. Just to save some time over here, I have already created some of the class definition and as well as I have initialized few of the variables over here. So here the first thing that I have done, I have created a class called as LRU. Over there I have created few of the member variables like I have created a linked hash set over here which is known as list. Then I have set the maximum size of the cache. And then I have created a variable called fault which will calculate the total number of page fault in our application. So here if you can see in our main block I have created an array of pages over here. And here I have created an object of the LRU class and I have passed the value 3 over here which determines the maximum size of the cache. And then after that I have started an iteration over this page array and I am passing the value of the requested pages to a function called as refer. So from here we will start our implementation of LRU caching. So the first thing that we need to check over here is like whether the page that we are requesting from here is present within our list or not. So here if the linked hash set contains the page over here then what we have to do as per our algorithm we just need to shuffle the preference of the requested page. So we will write a function called as shuffle and we will pass the parameter page over here. And if the list does not contain the page over here, then we just need to add corresponding requested page into our hash set. So here also we will write a function called as fault handle. So the first thing that we need to implement is for example we are requesting for a page and the page is not present within the hash set. So if the page is not present within the hash set we will call the function fault handle and within that fault handle we will first check that whether the size of the cache that is our list is full or not. So if the size of the list is max means the list is full then we have to write a logic to implement the eviction policy. 
If not, we can just add the requested page within the hash set. And since the requested page is not present in the hash set, we will just increase the number of fault over here. Now let's implement the eviction policy over here. So as we have seen in our visual display board that when the size of the list was full and there was a newly requested page for the cache, what we are doing, we were eliminating the least recently used page from our cache. So here first we need to find the least recently used page within the cache and that will be the first item of our cache. So here we will first get the first item of the cache. So this will give the first item that is the least recently used item within the cache which we need to remove. And after removing the least recently used page from the cache, we just simply need to add the new requested page within our hash set. And thus we have implemented the eviction policy over here. So what is happening over here is like, First, we are checking that whether the hash set contains the page or not. So if the hash set doesn't contain the page, we are calling a function called as fault handle. And within the fault handle, we are checking that whether the list is completely full or not. So if it is full, we are eliminating the first item that is the least recently used item from our list. And then we are adding the newly requested page within our list. And if the list is empty, then we are simply adding the page within our list and we are just increasing the fault over here. Now the next scenario that we have to tackle is like the shuffle algorithm. So what we have to do is like, so here we are checking that whether the list already have the page or not. So if the list already have the page, then what we have to do, we just need to shuffle the requested page and we have to bring it forward. That is on the right side of our hash set, which can easily be done. First, we will remove that item that is the page from our list and then we will again put back the item within the list. So here if we take an example that initially we have the cache as 2, 3 and 4 and we got a new request of page as 3. Then first thing that we are doing over here is we are removing that corresponding page 3 from here. So our new hash set will look like and then we are again inserting it back into our list. So here you can see 3 becomes the highest priority over here and becomes the most recently used page within our hash set. So let's run this program to see its output. So over here you can see that at the end of the iteration we have the page 1, 3 and 4 within our cache using the LRU policy and here the total number of page fault is 14. So this is what is our desired output. So I hope the entire algorithm that we have developed for implementing the LRU page replacement policy is quite simple and easy to understand. If not, please let me know in the comment section below. And don't worry, I will be providing the entire code snippet also in the description below. So let's move to the next problem of our system design algorithm. But before that, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update from my side and you are always prepared for your next interview. So see you on my next video. Thank you.